I'm not sure why I keep making all this modern art, but I guess I'm teaching you guys something. Stay tuned. Hi, welcome back. This is Kevin with Invencibar. And today I'm going to show you a couple of new things that are really cool. I use them all the time. I'm actually just going to start out with the cube right now. The first thing I want to show you is the loop cut tool. And this basically lets you segment different shapes into different sections. And I'll just show you how to do how to use it. Uh, first thing you want to do is go into edit mode so you can edit the cube with the shape itself. This is just the cube. And what you do is press control plus R and whatever edge you're nearest it gives you a cross section of whatever you're nearby. And it starts off with just one slice and if you use the scroll wheel it'll go up as two all the way, however many, and it shows how many down here in the corner. Right now I have nine. And I'll just start off with two for now. And once you click it, it lets you move them wherever you want. And if you just want to leave them perfectly centered, just right click it. And it leaves those centered. And what you can do with that then, if you want to size it along the y-axis you can just move those to like the edges like that or you can move it wherever you want pretty much but that just makes it those two centered and you can do that on all sides of the cube and it just shows you or just splits the cube up into if you don't press the exit makes it go all <laughs> kind of wonky because you can actually change the shape that way but if you do that with the exit moves it along there and then it gives you good edges so that if you want to make the object smooth there's another cool thing it's called subdivide surfaces and it makes the cube look really smooth it just, when you look at it like that, it doesn't show all the different things, but if you hit apply, I think I showed this on the glass video, but it splits it up into a whole bunch of different sections. But if you add that without uh, doing the loop tool on the edges, it makes the cube look really goofy. So if you go to just the cube and add that without anything, it makes the cube just basically a ball you can actually make a sphere out of the cube but if you go into edit mode you use the loop tool I'm just doing these one by one now just to kind of show you, you can make a cylinder with it that way you can make different shapes and you can do whatever you want with it really it's you can use it for all kinds of things One thing I used this for one time I was making a 3D modeling a couch and that worked really good for making that. And you can do that with pretty much any shape, like a cylinder. You can do it with the you can't do it up on top here, but you can do it on the side here. <clears throat> Excuse me, but if you want to Actually, I wanted to do two there. You do two like that, and if you wanted to make the center part just go in by itself, you'd have to hit E to extract it. That makes it go really weird, but and then hit Shift Z. Oh, we gotta hit S to size it. But if you hit Shift Z it excludes the x-axis so that it just moves on the y and the x so it just moves it in like that so it makes it a little barrel type thing 
or barbell type. And you can actually do that with multiple things. Oh, I keep hitting the shift Z on accident. I want to go back and just go back to the cylinder. And if you do the loop tool a whole bunch of times, you can actually make really interesting objects. And just A to deselect it all and go to the faces mode. You can right click and hold shift right next to the oh don't want to do that one next to the edge of all of these and then you can extract and then size you can move it in and you can make it cool that actually looks like a 3d printer head that's actually how I modeled it the uh, the print head on there on my 3D model that I have for it. But that's just one example of how you can make things like that. That one not really print very well, but that's how you can model something like that. But you can use that for all kinds of different applications. And let me show you another thing on the cylinder here. The uh, so you want to go back to the vertex mode. So the easiest way I found it is if you just press E to extract it, S to size it, and then hit 0.5. It moves it like right in the middle. Because cylinders are difficult to work with because they don't have any faces. They're all, it's a multiple edged face. And they're really hard to work with unless you fix them first. I usually do this and you can actually after you instead of clicking the mouse button you can actually also just press enter and it does the command. So I resize that to half the size. I'm going to select both of those. I'm just going to go to top view and see those are both exactly the same because I you use the 0.5 to make it half the width, so it's basically exactly halfway between there. Doesn't really matter exactly what size it is, but I usually try to make that small. Oh, see what I did there? I messed up. <laughs> so I resized it, but they're both selected, so it's going to size them on all three axes. Or axes. The what you need to do again is the S to size it and shift Z so it just moves on those those particular the X and Y and <coughs> excuse me and then you can use the uh, loop tool now on the rings like this and so I it only did it on the one but you can do the same you just have to pay attention to how many you did I didn't look there but and you can do the same thing here. It's kind of picky about where you click. You guys just kind of get used to it after time. We can extrude that. That looked goofy because it was on the X or the Y, one of the two. But if it's on the Z, then it shows that. That's just a another example of how you can do that. If you want to just do that there with those. And whenever you go into the loop tool it automatically a lot of the time goes into the line mode like this here. And so that's just what the loop tool does. And I'm going to show you more about the uh, What's the name of this one here? The proportional editing tool. And so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to add a cube in here. And so go back into the cube. And I'm going to kind of show you what the uh, proportional editing does. So let's go ahead and make uh, 24 is a good number. So we'll just put 24 cuts into the cube here. And if we went back to the line mode, we want to go 
in the Virgis mode. And so proportional editing tool, actually, let me go ahead and do the same thing on this one so that we have perfect cubes on there. And go into the front view, actually either one, front or side, either one doesn't, doesn't matter. Just want to select the edge on one of them. And then with the proportional editing tool, there's these different options you can use. The random one's pretty cool. It's not really useful a lot of the time for 3D modeling or anything like that. But what it does is it makes everything that you select kind of random from where it is. That one's pretty cool. And then there's the constant one. That just grabs kind of like a straight line edge from wherever you're at. Then there's the linear one. That just does a, a line from wherever you're at. Then there's the sharp one. This is probably one that I use the most. This and the round one. That one, it makes... You can make really nice curves with this one that are really smooth. And you can do this on any any object. Doesn't matter, have to be a cube. You can use it on pretty much anything. Like an airplane wing or something like that. This would work for. You can make different different types of curves. The sphere one's just a more of a evenly rounded one. But it just does the opposite of inverse or out. Which one was that? Well, that's the smooth one. That's kind of what that does. And you can actually use it if you just select one object it'll make it like you pick up the middle here you can make everything nice and curved or you can make a nice divot and the scroll wheel moves the circle and you can just change it you can like it it's kind of like it's the there's a clay mode where you can just pinch it and pull it's kind of what that does So it just makes it even, linear. Constant, it's kind of like, uh, it's basically just like ex extract, except it's more dynamic. That one you can actually use for, for a few different things. And then in the random one. make really easy mountains or something. That's the uh, proportional editing tool. These other things, I really, I haven't gotten into exploring a lot of these. I think this was the, oh, that's what these are. That's right. I should have explained these in an earlier video. I forgot about these. I never use them. That's probably why. So what these are, it just changes the look of the 3D cursor. So the one that's standard is just the one with the arrows. And there's the one with the ball. And you can actually just click on the line and automatically rotates it. So I don't know if that's rotating on the axis or not. Looks like it is, so. And those, actually, it's, uh. Those are a lot like, uh. I don't know if they have them in Unity or not. I haven't used Unity for so long, I forgot a lot of the things with it, but. I know in Unreal Editor they have those very same things. It's the, uh. Size shape. And the circle. You can spin it. 
and just the uh, movement. I just leave it on the movement one all the time because it just points out which axis it is. But the uh, whoop. Keep hitting shift today. I don't know what to do with. <laughs> but yeah, you can just manipulate it with those. And this just changes the pivot point of the cursor or the object. And it's on median point right now. So what that means is if you have two different objects. See right here, and you have them both selected. It goes to the uh, medium between the two. Like when you rotate, it goes on the individual objects. And if you do the, that's the individual origin one. The medium rotates around that same spot. And that one just rotates around whichever active thing you have. I think this is 3D cursor. Yeah, okay. And that moves around the 3D cursor. And the bounding box center, that, I've never used that. Actually, I, I never used these at all, really. I think I've played around with them once before, but... The individual origins ones, that you can use that for... Quite a few things. I wish I would have known about that earlier, but or used it more. This one I'm not sure what it is. I'll look into see what that one is and let you guys know in the next video. But that's just a a few simple things that to help you 3D model a little bit better. Trying to think of what else uh, I could do for now. But pretty much the uh, loop cut tool is the main one that I find useful for lots of things. I don't know how. You can do as many cuts as you want, I think. It's like 200 and 250. That's ridiculous, but you can do it. <laughs> you can get really fine if you have the uh, the uh, what this is called the proportional editing on. You can get really, really fine details with that. Oh, there's no it's only on the edge. Then you get into the problem of way too many polygons for the model that you're trying to work with. Sometimes that can be a problem. Because usually it shows the uh, how many vertexes there are up here, how many edges, how many faces, how many triangles, and how much memory it's using. That's what all these stats up here mean. I've had Blender really slowed down on me when I was trying to make trees for a game one time and it was like in the millions up here for the number of faces. It was ridiculous. <laughs> didn't, didn't like that that much. Some objects are just have that many because there's like leaves on a tree. It's there's a ton of them so. But that's all I have for this video and stay tuned and I'll keep showing you guys new things. Thanks for watching.